Today, I am joined by Peter Bodis, the visionary founder, CTO, and chief AI architect of Rossum. Under his guidance, Rossum has embarked on a mission to transform document communication with AI, making business operations faster and more efficient globally. In this interview, which is an informal chat site, as you already know, we are going to explore Peter's journey into AI, the innovation behind Rossum, and the game-changing capabilities of their latest AI model, Rossum Aurora. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, much, much appreciated. Already have Excited. done a video on Rossum Aurora. Awesome product. So very keen to know your AI journey and what exactly is the magic behind uh, Aurora here. So what inspired you to create Rossum and how did your background in AI contribute to its inception? Uh, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me here. Excited to be here. Uh, regarding your question, um, so uh, I was uh, doing uh, my AI uh, PhD in the area of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And at university, I met two amazing guys. We shared an office and uh, we realized gradually that rather uh, than each of us working on uh, their own dissertation, uh, we would really love to instead build something together. Uh, and uh, those uh, those two guys uh, ended up uh, being uh, my two co-founders at the company. So it was three of us, uh, three uh, AI PhD candidates uh, uh, um, forming forming a company. And we were looking for something uh, uh, that would uh, be uh, really hard, really push the limits of uh, of uh, the possibilities of the technology uh, of deep learning. Uh, and uh, uh, something that would be quite impactful, that would make some good difference in the world. And uh, we weren't really looking uh, for glamorous problems. We are also thinking uh, that, that there is plenty of areas um, in the world uh, which are a bit like uh, dusty, forgotten, uh, not so innovative historically, where deep learning could make a difference and we could make, uh, make a really big difference. And uh, uh, we realized that processing documents in businesses is one of those areas. Uh, uh, when we first uh, started Googling about that problem, uh, how can we, uh, yeah, whether we can make a difference by extracting uh, some data from invoices. Uh, uh, when we Googled that, uh, we found that there is actually plenty of tools that claim 100% automation, yeah. no worries, etc. So we thought, okay, this problem is solved. Let's move to the next one. But then we talked to uh, a variety of people in the business uh, and uh, uh, the story we have heard uh, was a very different one. Uh, they told us this is not a soft problem at all. And if you have something to help us, uh, please, here is my phone number. Uh, I, I need something like that desperately. So we did more. We realized that those uh, those those, those claims are uh, very inflated, uh, very marketingy, yeah. and uh, we embarked in, uh, on on building build, building building a solution because we also realized that this is really a big problem. There is plenty. There is open space is full of people in large enterprises where. Um, the people there, five days a week, eight hours a day, uh, they just, uh, the, all the, everything they do is just uh, type over some piece of information from some piece of paper or for, from some PDF on screen to some computer form. And it's totally crazy nowadays. Uh, so, and uh, if you look at just one document type, according to research, uh, according to business research, um, uh, for example, regarding invoices, there is, uh, more than a billion invoices each changed in the world every single yeah. day. So uh, this is a this is a large one. Awesome. Look, that is quite actually interesting because whenever you talk about AI products, LLMs, everyone is hyped up. People talk about all the uh, glamorous product as you very rightly put. But it is quite interesting that you are focusing on solving the actual real world problems and you're not just making another chatbot. That is quite intriguing. And yes, I can vouch for it. Um, still, this gleaning insights, intelligence out for out of the dumb invoices uh, and all those you know business documents is a real business problem. I'm based in Sydney, Australia, and I talk with a lot of companies here. And I can tell you that's a big problem. And companies uh, you know waste a lot of 
people's time, their own energy resources on this problem. And what I have understood what you have said is that this Rossum is not going to take away the jobs from the hands of those people. Rather, it will make them more empowered. It will free up their time to focus on their actual job. Am I right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. If you have uh, 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 like uh, an army of interns and all that they can do, all the, the like uh, the top of their job is to be able to type over those documents, you with Rossum, you will need less of that. Uh, this can be a case in some companies. Uh, but also those are frequently temp jobs, etc. Um, but but very frequently, it's accountants who know four world languages actually spending a lot of their time doing this kind of job instead of doing their real job uh, in terms of uh, reporting, giving more visibility and insight into the finances of the company, etc. So it depends on on who is actually doing it. But uh, but 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 we are making it a lot more efficient. And uh, nice. we are uh, basically how the product is designed is it makes those people six to ten times faster. That's our design goal uh, with which sure. we built the product. Awesome. And I will drop the link to Rossum again in my video description. And as I mentioned, I did a video on it where I go into more detail around Rossum. So if someone wants, they can also check it out. Now, I'm more than sure this wasn't a smooth journey and it did it happen in single day or single week. What were the challenges you faced, the big ones, with Rossum, and how did you address them? Uh, absolutely. So uh, Rossum is still a startup, still moving very fast, uh, innovating very fast, but we aren't a super new company anymore. We were founded in 2017, so we invested a lot, a lot into the technology, a lot into uh, getting established in the market, getting those big enterprises and big brands on board, and actually helping them in real life. Um, when we started in 2017, um, we, uh, from our perspective as actual AI scientists and researchers uh, who were in a kind of blank slate environment, uh, the machine learning and the AI, we were uh, able to build something very powerful, miles ahead of the competition back, uh, back then, uh, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, uh, because because it was still in the middle of the deep learning uh, revolution uh, uh, where where all the players were just uh, like using legacy templates, zone zone low CR templates based rule based stuff etc. Uh, uh, and we were actually actually kind of the peer the pioneers in in using convolutional networks and deep learning and all those new modern machine learning techniques. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, the big challenge for us was actually that to build something that our customers can use in the real world, in their accounting departments, in their shared service centers, uh, etc., kind of on the on the floor, uh, uh, you need to build an actual intelligent document processing platform. Nice. And the platform isn't just the AI. The platform needs to care about the document storage. The platform needs to have a great user interface that's intuitive. The platform uh, needs to have all those integrations and an extensible platform that can handle uh, handle a new integration that we can that our professional services department can uh, can deliver, etc. So uh, our challenge as a startup was that kind of the minimum mm. viable viable product for an IDP solution is actually not so not so minimal and you need to build a lot of stuff. So we actually spent uh, several years just building all the essential features, et cetera, uh, for this to be to be usable in practice. And uh, so so when 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 you just have an uh, idea in this space about a new kind of AI you want to use, actually you have a lot to build in order to be able to sell this to actual uh, finance departments and make a difference in the in, in the real world. And uh, it was quite a journey for us. But that when when we finally got to a good point there uh, with quite a few innovations along the way, that's when we uh, started to see the traction skyrocket and pick up. Awesome. Um, you wear many hats at Rossum. You have many roles. Of course, it's a startup. I could understand. So from R and D to marketing, how do you balance these diverse roles? Do you sleep at night uh, or? Uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes I do. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, it's like uh, as a startup, the company is changing a lot. Like every year, it's a bit different company from the previous year. So uh, all of us founders. Uh, are, uh, uh, were and are still going through a lot of 
personal growth and professional growth ourselves and a lot of evolution. So in the past, I was there were periods where uh, at the very beginning, I was hands on coding and inventing the original deep learning pipeline, actually putting all those uh, convolutional uh, neural networks together and so on. Uh, uh, and I'm still very involved in that and in, in our transformers and foundational models training and uh, the way we use it, et cetera. But I can be a little hands off because uh, we have a very major and very senior uh, team of amazing uh, scientists and machine learning engineers. Uh, I was uh, yeah heavily involved in product marketing and I was the first customer success manager of Rossum actually at, at some period many years back, et cetera. So, 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 so as a founder, you need to be very versatile. Uh, uh, of course, in the last uh, uh, in the last several years, in the last four or five years, the company matured a lot. That means my role stabilized, and I went through a phase of uh, being uh, quite hands-off manager, more of a visionary leader, building management team, building major engineering and product organization. Uh, and now I uh, now that we are kind of operating at scale, of course, this is the one of the things that's top of my mind uh, as the CTO of the company. But I actually find myself being able to come back uh, and invent more again and focus on some key areas where I can be uh, very hands on push the innovation a lot uh, together with, uh, with 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 obviously the individual engineers, the, the individual product managers, which is really enjoyable working together with those people on those on those innovations. And uh, my advantage right now, uh, besides, of course, uh, a lot of experience, but we have plenty of people like that, is that I have a kind of bird's eye view of the company so I can still make some connections between the business and, uh, and the R&D. And between very different ends of R and D, uh, that uh, that I'm just in a good position to uh, seeing those associations. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, uh, there is a TLLM technology, which is a, your own proprietary technology behind Aurora. I'm not going to ask any trade secret here, but is there uh, something you could tell us about this TLLM? Um, of course. So. Uh, let me start with the context like a TLLM uh, is something that we released uh, recently as part of our Rossum Aurora launch about a month back. Uh, even before that, Rossum uh, was the top of market solution. And as I mentioned a couple of times now, we had uh, uh, the, our original neural network pipeline was a series of convolutional neural networks. We performed this kind of two-phased OCR where we were skimming the document first, then focusing and zoning down on the actual information we need to extract and then reading that carefully. Uh, it uh, was a very unique approach. It was an uh, approach inspired by the te same technology that, for example, uh, helps self-driving cars uh, identify objects in scenes, etc. And then it, it, it was a uh, uh, top of market. Even like uh, still, still one month back, it was uh, what we routinely heard from our customers: is yeah, we benchmark those four solutions, and uh, you came, uh, you came as the as, as the one with the top accuracy. Uh, but nice. we have a, we feel we have a big mission because uh, our uh, our vision is that people just shouldn't have to spend time uh, administering those business transactions anymore at all. So our vision is uh, to have one person being able to handle 1 million transactions a year in a company. Right now, it can be something like 20, 25,000 if you are lucky. So uh, there is still like, yeah, 20 to 40 times improvement needed. So so even if we are top of the top of market, we are unhappy because we still need to double down on the automation still. We still want to provide a lot more. So uh, TLLMs are uh, on average uh, almost 40% better than the neural network pipeline that I just described. It's based on transformers. It's uh, based on also layout aware attention. So it's not based on GPT-4 or one of those uh, one of those models. Uh, it's uh, it, it's a foundation. It's based on a foundational model that that we trained in house. Uh, and uh, uh, the biggest innovation nowadays on those transform based uh, models isn't really anymore in the exact architecture of the neural network uh, itself. Uh, even though we of course, we still spend many, on the order of many to like hundreds of thousands of GPO hours uh, on, on on training those uh, training those models. But the biggest innovation is in exactly how you train uh, those neural networks and the training regime, and exa and uh, in exactly how you use them uh, to do predictions. 
And for that, we use a three-level training approach, uh, and uh, and uh, we 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 use those transformer model not just as a pure Gen AI model, but but using uh, some, uh, a technology that we developed that we call the discriminative decoder. And I am happy to go into detail for both of those things if you are interested. Just to give us, you know, one or two liner on them, please, for the benefit, okay. because audience absolutely. are quite technical here, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, regarding three-level training, um, basically what we start with is pre-training on a, uh, the, the neural network on a large corpora of hundreds of gigabytes of text uh, to gain the language understanding, then training on transactional documents with rich annotations, and third, uh, we continuously fine-tune uh, on the concrete uh, customer's task, which is something quite unique in the LLM space. And we trained the TLMs on the most uh, extensive data set on the market uh, uh, that's uh, based on transactional documents with rich positional annotations. And thanks to this uh, accumulated knowledge from the first two levels, uh, the AI actually has seen it all. And it gained a fundamental understanding sort of of the structure of transitional documents. And therefore, when we present it with a new problem, the AI instantly learns on the level three from every human input and can create the correct data uh, often already on the very next document. So that's okay. the three level training. And regarding the discriminative decoder, essentially what we wanted to address are the risks of the LLMs, like hallucinations, prompt injection, uh, or data le uh, leakage. And uh, generative AI has those risks kind of inherent, and that's why we actually take the best of both worlds. We train the uh, TLLM neural networks as generative models, but then instead of uh, kind of giving it a pen to write out the information on the prediction time when we want to identify the fields, we essentially just give it a highlighter to mark existing values on the document. So technically, the discriminative decoder algorithm uh, just makes sure that the generated answers always stay within the boundaries of the existing information. And rather than ask it to actually generate uh, generate, generate the text, we just ask it about each, uh, each piece of text on the document. Is this the amount total, uh, or is it the amount base, or is it something else, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to this, uh, we also can generate confidence levels. Uh, for each of those predictions. It's a score between zero and one. And those confidence levels, they are actually crucial if you want to build trustworthy automation. When you want to intelligently decide, does this document still need human review to make sure it's correct? Or is the AI confident enough so that with 98% probability, this document is fine and can be fully automated? Awesome. That is wonderful. Thanks for explaining it in such simple words. Now, just as an offshoot of this discussion, um, you are working at scale now. I mean, for example, I'm in Australia. Our business document formats are different. How do you deal with different business document formats in different geographical locations? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, first, uh, right now, yeah, uh, as you said, we are operating at scale. We are a, a global company. So uh, in our cloud uh, cloud deployments, we actually process documents from all across the world, which means that in our AI training data set, we have a very high variability of data. And yes, we have plenty of customers in, in, in Australia and the APEC region as well. Uh, so we are the, the, the AI has seen those documents during training uh, as well. Uh, so that's one aspect. And then the second aspect is uh, that uh, is that the AI got such a deep understanding of the business documents that even if it sees a new layout it has never seen before, it can still kind of understand what's going on and with very high probability extract the, uh, the, the right information. And then, of course, awesome. we have like local settings and customization options and simple scripting options. So if there is a systematic error in the way it parses numbers for some particular very strange case, it happens rarely, but it can happen, then you can just go and fix it very easily. Awesome. OK, look, we have talked enough about technology. You are based in world's most beautiful city, a timeless city, I would say Prague in Czech Republic. I know you have a very great soccer team, but uh, for me, the main highlight of uh, Czech Republic is Prague. Tell us about something uh, Prague. I mean, what is it living there from as a day to day, you know, life? 
Absolutely. So Prague is a very beautiful city, very historical city. It was spared uh, during the Second World War. It was spared uh, bombings during the war, etc. So there is a lot of like historical. Uh, the, the, the historical reservation is, is is very beautiful, very picturesque. Uh, honestly, if you live here, they they uh, you visit it like few times a year, but maybe not so but, but maybe not so frequently. Uh, what I really like about Prague is that it's kind of the right size of the city, and that uh, it's. Uh, very dense, like most European cities. It's uh, it's about uh, 1.5 million people, uh, the urban area roughly. Uh, uh, so you get things like uh, subway lines, uh, uh, restaurants of all types, etc. It's a very cosmopolitan city, but uh, it's a very safe city. So, for example, for example, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of scientific researchers and programmers, uh, etc., are actually moving to Prague uh, as a great place to have a family because the costs are nice. The costs are nice. Uh, the city is very civilized, very safe, and uh, it's still not too big that you can easily go out to nature for a day trip, etc. So it's. I think uh, I've spent uh, I've spent time in many cities over the world uh, uh, over my life, and I always love to come back because I think it's one of the best uh, places I know uh, for life. Awesome. Do you see many startups sprouting from Prague? Um, more and more. I mean, we aren't like on the level of London or uh, or, or some of the US areas, obviously. Uh, but I would say in Central Europe, it is one of the uh, uh, one of the one of the kind of hotspots for startups. It's also just not Czech starting the startups, but also a lot of expats uh, choosing Czechia uh, to to build the teams. Uh, and uh, and yeah, uh, more 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 and more startups uh, in in technology and awesome. in AI specifically. Awesome. And what do you do in your spare time other than Rossum? Oh, oh well, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm kind of a very geeky or nerdy person. So yeah, I I, I uh, either 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 play with AI on drones or repair old electronics or go uh, hunt some weather balloons or just play some game like 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 Overwatch for example or just do a lot of uh, a lot of reading. Awesome, I, beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Um, so any final message you want to give to the audience about you or Rossum or anything else? Yep, uh, I think uh, I would like to, uh, to, to, to encourage people to experiment uh, with AI in real world settings and look at, uh, at uh, the kind of processes in the world or in business that it can improve. I think there is still a vast amount of untouched a potential untouched territory and not all of those processes can be solved for example just by chat gpt sometimes you really need a specialized tool that you just cannot build uh, on top of chat gpt so if you are a programmer think about the opportunities there the, uh, there can be a huge opportunity for you if you are a person in one of those businesses think about tools that could help you and maybe sometimes it's just processes that you don't even realize that you can actually that you can actually remember once you find the tool think hard about is it actually in practice deployable? Which is a lot uh, about also those kind of boring things like integrations, how do you customize it? How do you set it up to actually fit your business specific? Because each business is, is, is different. And you would say like, for example, yeah, I, uh, I, I want to just process incoming invoices. Should be one size fits all, but every company actually has slightly different invoice tracking standards, slightly different purchase orders set up, et cetera. So it's all about those details. And uh, it's not enough to just have an API solution or something, some kind of toy solution that has nice numbers, but something that's ready for the real world and uh, ready for you to actually uh, customize in the real world. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Peter, for your time today. It was really wonderful talking to you and learning more about your AI journey and also Rossum. I, as I said, I will drop the link to Rossum in video description. I will also put the link to your LinkedIn profile so that if someone wants to reach out, they could. If they have any further questions or anything, or if they want, they can ask it in the comments. But thanks again. Uh, very nice having you today. Thank you, Fakt. Uh... Thank you for the excellent questions and uh, enjoy your day and everyone.